So the topic of backpacking gear and what to actually bring while you're backpacking can be pretty confusing and you know sometimes even intimidating. Today I want to go through my pack and show you what I bring on nearly every single three season outing. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Jeremy and this channel is all about outdoor adventure. I'm talking backpacking, hiking, hunting, and awesome gear. And if you're into any of that, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that bell so you don't miss a thing. You know, when I first started backpacking, I overpacked a lot. I kind of suffered from what if I dis? You know, what if that, what if this happens? As an Eagle Scout, I always strove to be prepared. And at the time, I guess I kind of thought that meant bringing more gear. Now, time, experience, and wisdom has taught me that being prepared really means bringing more knowledge into the backcountry. So today, I'm going to go through my pack and show you what I typically bring on every three season outing that I go on. This is my go-to gear set for an overnight to a week or more. I mean, I can really be out for an extended period of time with, with just the gear in this pack. If you're just getting started out, don't get too hung up on the specific gear. Instead, think about how you might apply the principles to your current gear kit. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'll show you how I actually stuff all of my gear into this pack. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the pack first. So this pack is obviously well used and loved. It's, a, it's an Osprey Exos 46. That means it's 46 liters. It has served me well for many years. I find it very comfortable. Let's get into the lid or the brain of the pack first. So the stuff that I keep in the brain or the lid of the pack are, are things that I want quick and easy access to. So that's gonna be my, my hydration system. So this is a Catadyne B-free water filter. It's three liters. And I pair that with this Platypus collapsible bottle. So this is my hydration uh, system, if you will. Uh, a lot of people will think, well, Jeremy, what happens if your bladder uh, breaks? Well, I mean, that's why I have two of them here. I've never actually had one of these puncture on me while backpacking in the backcountry. For me, this setup has worked out very, very well. Next thing in the brain of the pack is my poop kit. So that consists of a trowel, toilet paper, and wet wipes because it's a huge morale boost in the backcountry to, to use a wet wipe. If you haven't tried it, I highly encourage it. Next is rain gear. I carry a Ultrasil Nano tarp poncho. Uh, I go back and forth on whether I carry a rain jacket, rain pants, or, or a poncho. I actually prefer the poncho. And then I also have a pack cover, which is probably a little bit redundant with the poncho since the poncho actually can cover the pack as well. Last thing coming out of the brain is my headlamp. I use a black diamond storm and that's actually new this year and I've really liked it so far. That's the last thing in the top. So we'll open this up. You can see down here that inside this pack or inside this lid, I have a nice little mesh, nice little mesh pouch, which I keep my, basically my personal ditty bag in. And we'll go through that bag real quick here. So in this, this is just a, a little Eagle Creek Sil Nylon bag. I keep, I keep a power bank as well as a phone charger. A knife, you'll recognize this same Gerber skeletonized knife from another video, I'll post a link here. But I like this, very lightweight. Perfect for what I need it to do in the backcountry. Sunscreen. And some Purell. Hygiene, toothbrush, toothpaste. my first aid kit and I did a video on how I made this first aid kit. You can watch it here. More survival type stuff with fire starters, duct tape, and some waterproof matches. And that is everything in the personal ditty bag. Going to the hip belt of the pack has some really big mesh pockets. So on the, the right hip mesh pocket, I normally keep 
my snacks for the day. I do a lot of bars and trail mixes on the, on the trail. So I like to, to keep those easily at hand. That way I can munch as I'm walking. And on the other side, I keep my navigation. Could be a map and compass, and that's what I used to do. But now I keep my phone in a Ziploc bag or an Holocaust bag, keep it nice and waterproof. I use different phone apps. Uh, generally speaking, I'll, I'll either use a combination of Gaia and Onyx maps, and that will be my navigation. So I, I put my phone into airplane mode and make sure that I have downloaded base maps for the area that I plan on being in. And my phone, along with my power bank, has served me very, very well. If I'm going to be someplace really remote and I know that I'm not gonna have a cell signal, I'll also carry a Garmin InReach Mini. I've actually used this because I've had car trouble uh, at a quote unquote trailhead, meaning that I, I got my Subaru stuck in snow, which is difficult to do. Uh, way back uh, on a BLM dirt road. And uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, this came in very, very handy. So if you're gonna be someplace really remote, you might wanna look into something like this. But otherwise, I have found my cell phone to be just perfect. But if you don't like bringing electronics, learn to use a map and compass, great skill to have, and pretty, pretty enjoyable. Before we get into the pack, let's get on the outside of the pack. So here, Strapped to the outside, I have my tent poles. Generally speaking, and this will change this year, but when I'm going solo, I would take my MSR Hubba and it's worked very, very well. I've actually used it uh, into the winter time and uh, down to temps as low as 19 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it's been a great tent for me and uh, it's, a, it's a little bittersweet that I'll be swapping it out for a different option. If I want to go lighter or ultralight, I really do enjoy tarp camping with just a sill nylon tarp, uh, usually a 9x5. Alright, into the pack. First thing that I would pull out is my puffy layer. I like to have this easily at hand you get to camp or stopping for a rest. If the wind picks up and it's a little chilly, I'll throw this on. Next thing in here, my spare clothes. This this bag is all the clothes that I bring, even if I'm gone for a week or more. And what it consists of, and this is where people will normally overpack, but my spare clothes consist of gloves, a balaclava, a balaclava, bala, 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 a balaclava. I always pack an extra pair of socks, maybe up to two pairs of socks, depending on, on what I'm expecting weather-wise, but I'll always have at least one more and an extra pair of undies. That is my spare clothes. Extra undies, extra socks, head warmer, and hand warmer. And that's really all you need in terms of clothes. Embrace your stink bubble on the trail. Coming out next would be my food kit. And as you can tell, my food bag is empty. There is no food in here. But for my base weight, I just want to show you what I do have in here. So it is just a large sill nylon stuff sack with 50-foot paracord and a little carabiner. I prefer the PCT method of hanging bear bags, and if you're interested in that, leave a comment. I might do a video on that. I also carry a Tokes titanium spoon. I really like this long-handled spoon. And, of course, a trash bag. If you're not carrying a dedicated trash bag, please consider doing so. It will be a game-changer for you. Next up, my cook kit. I'm not gonna go through the cook kit, but suffice it to say, this has everything that I need to make a meal. So it is a 750 milliliter pot with my stove and lighter and everything else that I need in there. A fuel canister is also in there. If you want to learn more about this particular cook kit, watch this video up here. It'll tell you everything that you need to know and how to purchase everything in here. The whole thing is less than a pound and costs less than $85. Coming out next, the rest of my tent. Uh, Rainfly is in here, the actual tent body is in here. And remember, tent poles and the stakes were strapped to the outside of the pack. Next cut to come out is my sleeping, uh, 
part of my sleeping system. This is my sleeping pad, which is the Nemo Tensor Insulated, as well as my pillow, which is the Trekology A-Luft 2.0. And all the way down at the base of my pack, in this Event Sea to Summit dry bag, I carry my UGQ 10 degree quilt. I've been loving sleeping with a quilt versus a sleeping bag. So this is a new gear item. I've had it out a couple of times already this year uh, and temperature is down to 19 degrees and it has performed awesomely. So I'm looking forward to, to sharing more about this quilt with you guys soon. And that's it. This is my three season kit. I will bring this gear on, on every three season adventure. I may add to it depending on what the weather forecast is like, but this is this is my base gear. So as a bonus, let's figure out how to pack all this this gear up. And there's a lot of, you know, how do you fit all this back into that bag? So it's a big clown car, but I start off with the sleeping bag. I like to have the sleeping bag at the base of the bag. I think that it just provides a good base on which to build everything else. So that just gets stuffed all the way down there. Next thing that's gonna go in is my sleeping pad. I also kinda of like to pack in the reverse order that I'm going to need things throughout the day. So obviously I'm not gonna need my sleeping pad or, or sleeping bag, generally speaking, throughout the day. So that goes at the bottom. Next up, my tent. Next into the bag will either be my cook kit or my food, depending on how long I'm gonna be out. The food may provide a bit more of a base, but for now, I'm just gonna throw in my cook kit and my food bag. Clothes will come in next. And you see what I have here is a bunch of air in this bag. Open it at one corner. Kind of roll all that air out and then reseal it. You can also use dry bags here. I've always had good luck with, with just the freezer bags. They're light, they're cheap, and they're really easy to replace when you need to. So that'll go in. My puffy will go in. While I have the lid undone, I wanna take my personal ditty kit, put it underneath the lid. That provides just a little bit more protection for it. You know, when it, when it rains, it's got at least two extra layers to go through. So um, I'm not too worried about that getting, getting wet at all. I'm gonna take my tent poles and stakes, put them at the bottom. We have a, a little bungee here that makes it very convenient to go in and around. Another good feature about this Exos 46 is this, this huge helmet pocket back here. Uh, I use this for wet gear. So if my rain fly is uh, wet in the morning uh, or tent in general, it's gonna go back here until I get to a spot where I can just kind of lay it out and dry. We'll strap down the brain and stand it up. We got it open. So let's toss in our rain gear and pack cover. Throw in my headlamp next. I'm not gonna need that until I get to camp. Hopefully, if I'm hiking at night, well, it's, it's easy enough to either reach back and grab it or just duff your pack and take a little break, grab the gear that you need. Next up, my poop kit. You definitely want that on hand because when nature calls, it usually screams. Water filter will go in last. I want easy access to that when I come to a water source. We'll secure that. On the left side is where I keep my phone. And I will normally keep this strapped onto one of the uh, shoulder straps as I'm hiking. Let's toss it right here for now. And that's it. Now we have a fully loaded pack. If you found this video helpful and or encouraging, please share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, John317.